Hi everyone, Aaron here, and welcome back to the channel. We have an update today in the civil case against Scientology and Danny Masterson. This is separate from the criminal case against Danny Masterson that is scheduled to begin on October 11th. This civil case was brought by Danny Masterson's victims, but is on a different subject than the criminal case. When Danny's victims came forward in 2016 to the LAPD, since then they have been subjected to a campaign of harassment by Scientology and by Danny Masterson, and that is what the civil case is about. By the way, some people have said I should say alleged victims uh, and not victims, that perhaps it's slanderous because a court and a jury have not found him to be guilty. I personally don't need a judge or a jury to tell me about what I already know. I was still personally working for Scientology in Los Angeles as a member of Scientology C organization when these acts that Danny is being accused of occurred. My wife was also still working for Scientology as a member of the C organization out in LA when these attacks occurred and the post that she was holding, she actually received many of the reports that were written on Danny at that time by the Scientologists involved in these assaults. I know what I know. I know the people involved. I know they're telling the truth. When all of this started to become public and information about this was being reported in the press, I was having a conversation with my wife and she said, you know, I know of another victim of Danny's who has not come forward yet because she's still a Scientologist. And I assume most people know by now, but if you're a new viewer, maybe you don't. Scientologists are prohibited from ever reporting any information to the authorities about another Scientologist, about anything, no matter how criminal. So the name of that individual was provided to the authorities and it's up to the authorities at that point to follow up. But in some ways, uh, the authorities are put in an almost impossible situation. It's their job to prove that things occurred, to get testimony, to get evidence. And yet, w when it comes to a Scientologist who's the victim, if that Scientologist cooperates with the authorities, they are expelled from Scientology and declared a suppressive person, and they'll lose all their friends, their family, their job, their housing, their income. It's really an untenable situation. It's almost impossible. It is impossible for Scientologists to cooperate with the authorities in matters that have to do with Scientology or other Scientologists. And the only way they ever can cooperate is if they're prepared to leave Scientology, prepared to lose their family, friends, and all that kind of stuff. So it's a horrible situation that Scientologists who are victims of crimes are in. And that's why I use the language that I use because I know it to be true and correct regardless of anything. Okay, so Danny's victims file the civil suit for harassment. Scientology comes back and says to the courts, hey, these guys can't sue us. They used to be in Scientology and Scientologists all signed forms forfeiting their right to ever sue Scientology for any reason ever. In December of last year, an LA County Superior Court judge agreed with Scientology and told these victims, yeah, you're not allowed to sue. You have to go do Scientology's internal arbitration instead. The plaintiffs, Danny's victims, appealed that decision and then in January of this year, California's second appellate division overruled the LA County Superior Court judge and said, no, those agreements are not binding on people who have left Scientology when they are suing Scientology for things that also occurred after they left Scientology. So Scientology has appealed to the Supreme Court. They've asked the Supreme Court to review this decision uh, by California's second appellate division. And obviously with an eye to, uh, you know, from Scientology's perspective, overturning this decision. Now these petitions are called a writ of cert. Now you would think that cert stands for certification. It does not. Cert stands for this word right here. In preparation for this video, I spent an inordinate amount of time trying to find the correct pronunciation for this word. In reviewing many legal channels on YouTube, I came across no less than seven different pronunciations. We have certiori, we have certiori, we have certiorari, 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 and certiorari. <laughs> and the last one of certiorari is what Elena Kagan, Supreme Court Justice Elena Kagan said in a video specifically discussing all of the many ways to pronounce this word. And since she is a Supreme Court Justice, certiorari wins the day. <laughs> 
But none of this even matters because we can just call it a petition, but it is an awful lot of fun. So Scientology filed its petition. The Supreme Court receives between 8,000 and 10,000 such, uh, such petitions per year, and they only take up between 100 to 200 of them. This is a Hail Mary long shot from Scientology, but I mean, this is what they do. They have all the money in the world to pay for lawyers. Their main tactic really is to delay and delay and delay. So e even if uh, it, uh, anytime they have an opportunity to appeal something all the way up to the Supreme Court, 10 out of 10 times they're gonna do it. They don't care how much it costs. So the Supreme Court gets thousands upon thousands of these petitions. They all have to be reviewed one way or the other. So each Supreme Court justice generally has about four law clerks. These, all these petitions are distributed amongst all of the law clerks. When the Supreme Court justices law clerks have finished the process of going through all the petitions, writing their notes for which ones they think merit further discussion, they do what's called distributing the petitions for conference. And this is when all of the petitions get forwarded onto the Supreme Court justices themselves. They discuss the ones that their law clerks have marked as being worthy for discussion. And essentially any petitions that don't get discussed or picked are automatically dead in the water. Any single petition already has a very small chance of being discussed. Any petition that gets discussed has a very small chance of actually being selected for that case to be heard in front of the Supreme Court. But the development is that just yesterday, Scientology's petition was officially distributed for conference and that conference is scheduled on September 28th. So September 28th is when Scientology's petition at least has a chance of being discussed and will it be discussed? Will it be selected? The odds are very low and not in Scientology's favor, but you never know. And whatever happens on September 28th, we're probably not gonna find out about it until likely several weeks after the fact. But as of right now, the entirety of the civil lawsuit against Scientology, against Danny Masterson, hinges on what happens on September 28th. So as soon as we hear about what the result of the September 28th conference is, I will let you guys know. Don't forget, Danny Masterson's criminal trial, scheduled to start October 11th. Scientology has an awful lot to be afraid of when that trial begins. And I'm gonna be bringing you everything I can every day that there's something to tell you about. I'll be telling you about it. So stay tuned to this channel. It's gonna be a wild ride. All right, everyone, that's all I have for now. Thank you for watching. Thank you to all of you who watch until the very end, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, if you wanna see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you wanna see a, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, then you could click right in right here. If you have six, or not, subscribe right here.